Most of us have tried dieting of one sort or another, but have we actually been happy with the end result? Maybe we've been happy whilst we've been dieting, but then sometime after we finish, we come to back to the place where we were before and aren't happy with the weight that we've achieved. So what's the solution? Well, I'm delighted today to be joined by Lynn Rossi, who's an expert in mindfulness eating and gets lots of results with the clients that she works with or people that follow a program which is called Eat for Life, which is a 10 week program which helps people with body image issues and weight management through intuitive mindful eating. Hi Lynn, thanks so much for joining us again. Great to have you with us. Yeah, nice, nice to, to be here. Now Lynn, last time we spoke it was about mindfulness, but today we're going to talk specifically about mindful eating. Now I understand that you've written a 10 week program called Is It Mind to Eat, um, which is... Oh no, Eat for Life. Eat for, eat for life. life, sorry for life. <laughs> <laughs> I always scramble my words, I'm obviously not being mindful enough. <laughs> So, okay, but so um, it's a program that helps people with um, body image issues. Is that correct? Can you tell us a little bit more about it, anyway? Yes. So the Eat for Life program is a program that I developed when I was working at the University of Missouri, right. um, part of their wellness program. And we did some research on the ten week program and found that people who took the program actually increased in mindfulness, which we talk about as being present mm -hmm. without judgment. Okay. Um, we uh, increase people's ability to eat intuitively, yeah. and uh, when, what that means is that people are more likely to eat based on physical hunger cues as opposed to cues, um, emotional cues, or environmental cues, okay. which we have a lot of, right? Okay. We're told to eat a lot. We also found that people um, had an increase in body appreciation, and we know that when people appreciate their bodies more, they'll treat it better. Sure. We also found that people uh, decrease binge eating, so, okay. and that all of, the, all of the results were mediated by mindfulness. So the more mindful you are, the better you're going to be at that. Okay. So, um, so if you, people eating a normal meal become more aware of what they're eating, they're appreciating the tastes a little bit better than they would normally, and, the, and, and what, what's the end result in, in eating mindfully? Well, so people begin to discover for themselves mm. um, what their body likes and what their body doesn't like. So one of the most profound things I ever had people, someone say to me was in the second week of class, this one woman came in after I, I teach, in week one I teach the basics of mindful eating. So there's this um, process that I have people go through that brings mindfulness into the eating process. She came back in the second week and she said, I don't like anything I eat. I just hadn't noticed before. Oh my goodness, that's pretty profound. Okay. It is extremely profound. And mm. and I mean, I hear this kind of story a lot in you know various forms. Another woman just recently told me that um, she always ate as a snack the chocolate M&Ms. Okay. I mean, every, every afternoon she'd eat chocolate M&Ms. And then after learning some mindfulness, she got the chocolate M&Ms and she was going to eat it mindfully. And she's like, I don't even like them. I don't like the chocolate that's around the peanut. Oh so okay. I'm just going to eat peanuts. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing, isn't it, really? I mean, also, I guess if you are eating mindfully, it might it slow you down in eating because you're taking your time and thinking about it. So you might eat less as a result. Yeah, so that's part of the, um, one of the things that I teach people is to slow down uh, when they eat. When you slow down, you're actually paying more attention, you're chewing your food food thoroughly, um, you're actually, you know, being aware of how much you're eating and, you know, if it even tastes good to you. Um, so that's uh, all an important aspect of mindful eating. Okay, um, and so do you have sort of people coming to you that, are struggling with weight, maybe they've tried lots of different diets and it's not helping them. Um, can you can you help that these type of people? Well, so this is a non-diet approach. Okay. Okay. To weight to weight management. So I I really uh, get people when they have you know been on diet after diet after diet and they're like it doesn't work because we know that diets don't work. They may work in the short term, but if it's a diet you can't maintain, you're you're, you're not going to be benefited in the long term. You're going to gain weight back and probably more. And that's what we found. And that's what the research has found. Yeah, I was going to I was going to stop Go on that point because 
in, in terms of dieting and what you're saying, I believe in too, is that they don't work. Is that because the body really is, you know, once you finish the diet, it's saying, oh my goodness, I've been starved of various food or different types of food. Now I'm going to try and keep that food inside me and, and store it as fat as best I can in case I go on a starvation diet again. Is it sort of, does it working in that sort of way? Well, there's a couple of things. So if you, if you calorie restrict too much, right, your body is going to think that it's starving and it's going to store food as fat. That's not what we're looking for, right? Um, the other thing is, is if you're on a diet, so I just had somebody at work who was on a 30-day diet, you know, for 30 days, I'm going to restrict everything and I'm going to eat in a certain way. And he sent around an email and he said, my diet ends on Wednesday. We're going to go out to the Mexican restaurant and we're going to eat lots of cheese and chips and, and margaritas and, you know, I'm just going to blow it out, you know. <laughs> And so that's what happens, you know, that's ridiculous. He went on a cleansing diet, and then at the end of it, he's just going to pile as much junk into his body as he can. That is not a healthy way to live, you know. So eat for life is really, you know, I always tease with people uh, that take my class that it's not an eat for 10 weeks, it's an eat for life class. (laughs) Because... This is a plan that you can take into your lifetime. I'm continually learning new things about what my body likes, what it doesn't like, and I have enough—excuse me—I have enough appreciation for my body and respect for my body that I really try to give it food um, and drink that you know it responds well to. Okay, so on that point, because obviously we're we're being told that there are certain good foods and bad foods, and certain things we should, you know, definitely should stay away from fizzy drinks, you know, lots of chocolate, that sort of thing. Is mindful eating about changing our diet or is it just being mindful about what we eat and should we be changing what we're eating or just going with what our bodies tells us it likes? Yeah, so there in the book, I talk about the fact that there's no forbidden food. The minute that you forbid food, you want it. Right. So I don't set you up like that, but I also um, ask you to pay attention to what's the right amount of a, you know, of of a certain food. So, for instance, I say, you know, what's the right amount of a pan of brownies? Okay. Is it the whole pan, or is it a bite or two? You know. And uh, when we eat food mindfully, and those, you know, um, supposedly bad foods, they're just food that are higher in fat and sugar. Okay. And even though you don't want that to be the, the you know, the, the majority of your diet, when you eat mindfully and you eat it and pay attention to it, mm-hmm. you can tell that the body doesn't want that much of it. So you don't have much of it. And you can tell if you really pay attention um, when things have too much of a chemical taste or things have too much preservatives. We really become so numb to the taste of the food that we're eating that we really don't register it. Yeah. And your uh, taste buds can get acclimated to that fast food, highly processed food, and it's going to take some time and mindfulness practice to really begin to shift you over to really understanding and being aware of what it is that you're, that you're eating and tasting. Okay. So but that happens help. naturally. Yeah, so it might help to shift us from eating a, a poor diet to one which is a lot healthier. And, and this could really right. help the children who are, you know, used to fast foods and fizzy drinks and that sort of thing. If we get them to think about exactly what they're tasting, the hope is that they might think, well, actually, you know, this this other natural drink tastes a lot better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think some education can be important. I mean, there's certainly been enough research that looks at the perils of drinking soda that, you know, if you, you know, look at that, you can, you know, Think well, you know, maybe I should be thinking this through a little bit differently. So we don't want to throw out our thinking mind when we're approaching food. We know that certain things are uh, going to be better for us than others, and exploring the whole world of food and taking time. So in my book, I really talk about the idea of um, healthy fast food, uh, which is actually food that you fix at home, um, but it doesn't have to take a long time. It can be pretty simple, and so getting you know reprioritizing. The food that you eat, because my gosh, you know, over the past 50 years, our healthcare costs have skyrocketed and are at least over here, you know, and the, the cost of food has gone down. Um, whereas food used to be more expensive and our healthcare costs were very low. So we have to reprioritize and think, you know, I need to spend perhaps a little extra money on food. It is medicine. 
Food is medicine, right? What you put into your into your body is really what your body is going to be. So think, and in the book, I kind of really try to help people appreciate this miracle of the body that they live in, and how how do you want to treat this miracle of a body? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a great note to end on. And I think I guess where we want to be aiming is to not only eating mindfully, but eating mindfully good food as opposed to bad ones, and and then that's the ultimate achievement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Lynn, before I let you go, can you let me or the viewers know exactly where they can find your book and more about you? Yeah. So, I have a, a website at lynnrossi.com okay. and it's L Y N N R O S S Y.com. Okay. And the book is The Mindfulness Based Eating Solution. Okay. can be found on any of your major online retailers. Okay. And is that something that people can just pick up and go through on their own or are there any CDs with it or anything? They like? can. They okay. can. The, the recordings that are listed in the book are on my website. Oh, great. Okay. Super. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, Harriet. Thanks, Lynn. Bye-bye. Well, that was Lynn Rossi joining us today from Missouri in the United States, um, talking to us about mindful eating. And I hope you learned as much as I did. But if you'd like to learn some more, please look at the links below this video or get in contact with me again and I can reach out to Lynn. The email to contact is Harriet, H-A-R-R-I-E-W-T at worldlyexamine.com. And in the meantime, please stay happy, healthy, single mums.